Hi, this is an optional and very brief look at how humans learn language. So how do humans learn to talk or to sign their sign language? There are many theories, and this is an area of research called psycholinguistics. And the summary is that there is no consensus, but I thought it might be illuminating to look at the different theories that we have and how they compare to what we do with computers. The main question that we have is whether being exposed to, enough, to many sentences of a language is enough to learn the language. And, and this is particularly important for babies. If you talk enough of a language to a baby, what are they going to do with that? In reality, we see that babies learn language almost miraculously. In two to three years, they're speaking a language. The main question we have is, in psycholinguistics is, is being exposed to many sentences enough to learn a language? Some currents of thought say yes, that the input, the sentences that you hear, are very rich, rich enough that you can get um, cognitive extrapolation, essentially statistical extrapolation of patterns, and that in time these patterns will emerge as a human language. There's many uh, different theories for how this could go, and from the past to the present, uh, they have been called behaviorism, structuralism, functionalism, but in essence they say that the input is all you need, that somehow your brain is going to pull together the cognitive resources to compute language and to acquire it. There's a second current of thought that says no, that being exposed to many sentences of a language is not enough, that somehow uh, the input is not rich enough. This is called poverty of stimulus. And that we have something in our brain that fills in the blanks and that essentially the input is uh, a way for us to fill in those blanks and that those rules or mechanisms that we have in our brain essentially will instantiate language. This current of thought is called generativism. Um, you might be familiar with Noam Chomsky, for example. He's one of the proponents of these theories. And essentially what would happen is that you could have something, uh, theories that are very aggressive in saying that humans have a lot of principles and parameters, for example, in their brain. They have parameters that need to be switched on and off, depending on the input that we get. There's some theories like uh, minimalism and merge that say that we have a few operations to merge cognitive objects, and doing that, we string together structures in a language. But essentially, these theories say that the input is not enough, that there's something about us humans and about our, our cognition that is dedicated to language and that makes us very good at language. Again, maybe this evolved. Maybe it's some sort of separate module in our brain, but that there's something language-specific in us. Whereas theories like functionalism think that we learn language using uh, a pooling of all of our cognitive resources. There's one piece of evidence in favor of generativism, which is that children learn languages very fast, but adults don't. If you've seen a baby learn, again, they in three years, they will learn a human language. And if they're doing it at that rate, they must be learning about 50 words a day. They can regularize patterns very easily. So, for example, what we see there is an object called a wug. And now there's another one. There's two of them. There are two. You're probably going to say wugs. And children are able to... Uh, uh, successfully do this exercise from a very young age. They're very good at, at generalizing and exploiting uh, patterns of the data or at filling in their uh, language acquisition device with the data. However, adults are not good at this. They need instruction, concentration, and years to learn another language. Generativists say that we have some sort of language acquisition device in our brain that is on from a very early age and specialized uh, towards language and that then switches off as we have other uh, evolutionary uh, focus worries in life such as socialization for example the functionalists would say that 
when you're a baby, your priority is to learn language. So you focus all of your cognitive resources into this task. Whatever is happening in your brain, we do have a clear idea of how babies learn, uh, what the process is the, for them to learn how to speak. They start with sim very simple expressions, cooing, babbling. They go through single words and then telegraphic stages where they can just have one or two words together. And then suddenly their knowledge explodes and they can put together many uh, longer sentences. The errors that they make are fascinating because they overgeneralize. When they make a mistake with a word, it's usually a word that is a weird exception and they try to say it with the general pattern. So they are very good at learning, they learn very fast, and they whatever errors they make are very different from those of a computer. So we probably don't want to model our computer uh, learning of language in the human learning. So in summary, there are several theories about how human learn languages. Some theories say that we extrapolate from the data and using general cognition arrive at uh, a knowledge of the language. Some theories say that the data is not enough, that there's something unique about us as humans that makes us particularly good about languages. And there are models for how children learn how to speak, but our computational models not only are not related to them, but they don't need to be. We do not need to imitate how humans learn language. All we need to do is to imitate their capacity at understanding language and producing language. We don't necessarily need to do it in exactly the same way that humans are. Thanks.